Cheryl Lynch here, and today I'm going to share with you my technique called mini mosaic quilts. I've been teaching them at workshops at quilt guilds and in some local quilt shops, and many people have asked me to share more about them and if I had kits. So I spent the winter working on designing and developing a whole line of mini mosaic quilts, including instructions, and I have them as kits. This is last summer's issue of Quilting Arts, and here is my article about mini mosaic quilts. And you can see there's the pomegranate right on the front uh, cover of the article, and then there's also Tiny Town on the side. So those are just two of the kits I'm offering right now. Let me show you a few other mini mosaic quilts. Here's a giraffe. And she's very popular, I think because of April. I'm sure many of you have seen April on social media. A bicycle. And here's a sea turtle. So this is what the kit looks like. And this is the back of it. And I'll show you what's inside each kit. This is what's in each kit. There's the cover mini quilt so that you can see it for all the suggestions for where to place your fabric. There's an instruction guide. It's an eight page pamphlet that tells you exactly how to do the mini mosaics from start to finish. The line drawing pattern for whichever kit you order, a piece of sticky stabilizer, all the fabric that you need. There are 50 to 60 batik squares, because I recommend only using batiks, and a piece of netting, and a piece of what I call grout fabric. So if you read the instructions, you'll know what I mean by grout fabric. The key to this technique is using lots of different batik prints, uh, different textures, different colors. Uh, I don't use very many large scale prints. Most of them are small, and it's nice when there's more than one color in the print. For example, this brown with the blue fabric in it, the blue print in it, and, oh, this is a nice one too, the gold with the yellow. So these are two inch squares that come with the kit and they're gonna be cut again into tiny pieces to use to make the mosaic. You can cut up to five or six layers of the batik fabrics, depending on upon how sharp your rotary cutter blade is. And to, do, to make it easy to cut them into 3 8 inch squares, I designed a cutting guide. So the first thing is to line this up, place it over the squares with a little bit of fabric showing out the one side. And then these are slits that are 3 8 inch is apart. So cut down all the slits. And then take a hard plastic card. You can use either an expired credit card or a membership card. And what I'm doing is I'm removing all the strips that aren't 3 8 inches wide. Then you take your cutting guide and turn it 90 degrees. <clears throat> And you can line up the dash lines with the slices you've already made so that your pieces are perfectly square. And again, come in a little bit from each side so that you can get rid of the reggy edge and cut again. Okay, take your plastic membership card and get rid of those small pieces on both edges and then I fluff them. That's what I call it, I fluff them because they kind of want to stick together. Fluff them up, put them in a cup and you're ready to go. And that's how you get your 3 8 inch squares. Oodles and oodles of them. The first step to create your mini mosaic is to take your line drawing pattern, tape it to a piece of, I use foam core, 
you need something where a thumbtack will be able to hold it in place. Then you take your sticky stabilizer and remove one of the pieces of paper. Place it on top of your pattern with the sticky side up and thumbtack it in place. Then you'll need a sharp pair of scissors and your tweezers and your cut up pieces of fabric and you take your fabric and start placing it along the outside of the largest motif in your design. The next step are all outlined in the instruction pamphlet. After you filled in your whole pattern with the little squares of fabric, it's time to heat set it and steam it so that you can move on to the next step. So you need the piece of release paper that you set aside in the beginning and you want to place that on top of Place that on top of your uh, mosaic and you're going to heat set it for five seconds. Dry iron, press, 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 pull it off before it cools down. Then you want to make sure that you trim off any um, little pieces of fabric that are extending past the 9 by 12 inch sheet of um, of the sticky stabilizer. After you do that, you're going to replace the sheet, extra sheet of release paper. You're gonna turn the whole piece over and then steam it according to the directions that come in the instruction booklet. This is one of the most critical steps and um, you need to follow the directions exactly. After you've steamed it, let it cool down and then the release sheet of paper should peel off the back. You'll need to do this carefully. If it doesn't peel off, then you need to go back and uh, steam it again. Now you have your mini mosaic ready to go for the quilting step and the next step is to place it on top of what I call the grout fabric. This is the fabric that you're going to be able to see in between the little spaces between your squares of fabric. Press it onto that using the release paper so you don't get any of the sticky stuff on your iron. And after you've pressed it on, trim the grout so it only extends one quarter inch past the mini mosaic. Now it's time to make the quilt sandwich. Place the backing fabric wrong side up on your table, batting your mini mosaic, and then on top of it, you're going to place a piece of netting and just use a few pins to put it in place. The netting comes in all of the kits. Sew on the inner border, making sure that you catch the netting in your seam allowance and then you can add your next border and you go in and quilt it and I quilt in the grout lines this is again I hate to sound like a broken record this is in the instructions and you get to finish your mini mosaic quilt it's a lot of fun I hope you're as excited about my mini mosaic quilts as I am They've been very popular and so many people want to make them. So I'm presenting 12 kits right now. I'll probably add more in the future. There is an option of buying them without fabric. And there's also the option of just buying the cutting guide. So you may want to do your own thing. 
and everything comes with instructions, complete instructions on how to make them from beginning to end. And uh, check out the Etsy shop and see if you can find one or two or maybe more that you might be interested in wanting to buy. Happy quilting!